Hi, my name is Bev Sheckman. I am vice president of the Doctor Patient Forum. And somebody sent me an email yesterday that actually I started shaking when I read it. I had to get up early this morning. Well, I always get up early, but I had to get up this morning and make this video. Somebody uh, contacted me yesterday and asked me if I wanted to see their pain contract. And I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, a lot of people send us their pain contracts and usually they're all just about the same, right? Just sometimes there's like a little different wording. So I actually didn't read it right away. I made the mistake of reading it last night before I went to sleep. And it actually kept me up last night. I was so incredibly angry and disgusted that I kept on asking myself, am I being punked? Like, is it possible that this is actually true? Because surely this is not true in this country. But alas, it's true. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm going to share my screen with you and we are going to read this pain contract together. I notice when I read, when I share a screen, it doesn't look like I'm looking at you because I'm looking at the screen. I'm very sorry, but I will be reading this and not be making eye contact with you, but you'll see why in a minute that I got so incredibly angry. Okay, so here we have the pain contract. So we blocked out any identifying information, but I'm just gonna read this to you. Opioid, chronic pain opioid treatment informed consent and agreement. The purpose of this chronic pain agreement between you and your medical provider is to provide safe use of opioids for pain control. These medications can be dangerous and it is important to follow this agreement exactly. Opioids can cause side effects. These include, but are not limited to, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, changes in heart rate or breathing, confusion, extreme drowsiness, passing out, and even death. These medications can be habit forming. Okay, you ready for the next line? Because of these risks, the US Centers for Disease Control, otherwise known as the CDC, have set a limit of opioid use and supports this limit. And this clinic supports this limit for your safety. I'm gonna read that one more time. Because of these risks, the US Centers for Disease Control have set a limit of opioid use. Here's another line. Studies show that cutting down from dangerous high doses of opioids, stopping all opioids, results in improved activity and mood. While there is often a short-term increase in pain while doing so, there is steady long-term improvement. We at this clinic expect you to follow everything in this treatment plan, both for your safety and health. Now, just in the introduction, we see stigma and we see lies. CDC didn't set a limit, at least that's what they say. And there are no studies that show that. Of course, they don't show us the studies. But if you get a, if you get a contract like this, I know it's hard to ask questions because you feel like if you make waves, they'll dismiss you and chances are they may. But ask your doctor what those studies are. I would love to see those studies. Okay, so then it talks about the patient's medication. I agree to follow all items listed in this agreement to receive opioid medications from my medical provider. Failure to follow may result in opioid prescriptions being stopped immediately. Following all items listed will help keep you safe and will be following the state guidelines. Okay. Here we go. Number one, I understand that opioid medications are meant to improve my pain and will not take it away. The goal is to improve my quality of life and my ability to be active in daily living. Okay, we know they put that because they always say that pain patients want to be in zero pain and blah, blah, blah. Although I've never heard a pain patient say it, but fine, not, not, not that big of a deal. Number two, you ready for this one? This is what made me, like my heart started pounding when I read this. Okay, I agree to do my part to stay healthy as this will help it to improve pain. This includes what I eat, regular exercise, stable weight, increasing support, and following all medications and treatment plans. So these patients, as you heard, if anything isn't followed, the opioids will be stopped immediately. They have to agree to exercise, eating well, and a stable weight. So if a patient gains weight, they have agreed to be dismissed. And I don't know if they've ever dismissed patients for this or not, but I, I, I cannot even begin to explain to you how angry this made me. Let me put it to you this way. Would they say that to a diabetic? Would they make them sign something saying, if you eat any sugar, you're going to be dismissed immediately? Or how about a lung cancer patient? We won't give you chemotherapy anymore if you continue to smoke. Or would they ever do this, an opioid contract for someone on Suboxone for OUD? If they gain weight, would they be dismissed? I mean, if, 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 
eating right and keeping a stable weight makes you healthier, it's going to help everybody, right? But it's only pain patients who have to do this, right? And I want to know why. This made me so angry. So, so angry. Number three, at times your medical provider may ask you to participate in treatment or testing to better understand your pain. I agree to participate in these referrals, even if I'm not sure the appointments will be helpful. These include behavioral health evaluations, therapy, pain groups, or other departments. So in order to get opioids, a patient has to agree to all of those things. Do they do that for any other group of patients? People with diabetes, cancer, addiction, anything else? Anything else at all? No? Only pain patients? Ah, got it. I realize that my medications, listed above, have side effects, which have been explained to me. I am aware there, there may be other side effects which are not listed above. I do not hold my provider responsible for any side effects that result from my use. Okay, I get that. Now look, I get that doctors are scared. I would be scared too. And they have a right to want to protect themselves. But this, I still think this must be a joke. Number five, I will tell my provider all the medications I am taking and treatments I am receiving, including over-the-counter medications, herbs, and other alternative treatments. Using other medications, herbs, vitamins, and other treatments may have unintended results. I will take all medications as they are meant to be taken in their original form. Good, fine, nothing wrong. Now, I want you to listen to these definitions here, okay? The following definitions are important to understand, they say, physical dependence. This happens when a medication is used for a long period of time and the body starts needing the medicine to keep the same benefit going. Okay. Sudden or gradual reduction in the medicine causes unpleasant physical symptoms, seizures, and possibly death. Uh, I don't know. I never heard that opioid withdrawal can cause seizures, but maybe it can. This should be done with your provider. Got it. No problem. Addiction. This is what I want you to pay attention to here because this is not the definition of addiction. Not even a little bit. Once your brain thinks it needs a medicine, stopping the medicine can cause your brain to strongly crave or want the medicine even more. This can lead you to do things that you wouldn't normally do to get the medicine, such as lying, stealing, and faking illness. The need to continue the medicine is strong, even though it could lead to bad things happening, such as arrest, poor relationships, and feeling sick. Not the definition of OUD, at all. It's really using despite negative consequences. So maybe that's what the, what they were getting at. But to me, this feels like a whole lot of reefer madness put specifically on pain patients. Faking illness, by the way. Yeah. Tolerance. The brain gets used to a medicine and the amount taken and it needs more to work the same way. Got it. No problem with that. Number seven, I will not use illegal drugs or medications not prescribed to me as it is unsafe. Got it. I will not use alcohol. I mean, I understand the reason, but I still think that's ridiculous. I mean, we've heard, we heard from a patient whose mother was dismissed. She had a glass of wine for her 80th birthday, tested positive, and was stopped cold turkey from her opioid she'd been on for decades. I will not use marijuana. Funny because, <laughs> that's funny because our country's pushing uh, cannabis, medical cannabis, as the solution for the opioid crisis, but this, we're not allowed to even try it. And as you may have seen, a pain patient in North Carolina was dismissed because she had tested positive for THC because of CBD oil she used, but you know, whatever. Number 10, I agree to provide when asked urine or blood for drug screens to make sure I'm taking my prescribed medication as I'm supposed to and not taking non-prescribed medication or drugs. You must have a working up-to-date phone number in the system where you can be called or a message left. If you don't provide urine blood sample within 24 hours of a request, all opioid prescriptions will be stopped. Charges may apply for testing. You're responsible for those charges. Okay, 24 hours. What if a patient's out of state? And I'm gonna to explain to you what happens now. Pain patients have to call their doctor and ask them for permission to leave the state. We are treated like parolees. And if you, you hear the tone of this letter, it really is. I think we have fewer rights than parolees actually. Number 12, I will not share, sell, or trade my medication with anyone. Great. I will not use medicine that is intended for someone else. Great. I will not try to get medicine using fake prescriptions or false pretenses. Fine. Number 13. I will only receive opioid medications from the provider listed on this agreement unless there is an emergency or I've talked with my provider ahead of time. No problem there. 14. 
If I need treatment with opioid pain medications in an emergency room or walk-in clinic, I will let the ER or walk-in clinic provider know what medicines I take and the pain agreement. Great. I will let them know that I can only have a seven day or fewer supply and only in emergency cases that cannot wait for my regular provider. It is my responsibility to get a copy of the ER visit and provide it to my primary care provider as soon as I'm able. Great. I mean, that's actually nicer than a lot of contracts I've seen. So that part I'm I'm fine with. Number 15, I will keep safe my opioid medications by locking them up away from children. Lost, stolen, destroyed, or overused medications will not be replaced or refilled early. 16, I agree that refills of my pain medications will only be made during an office visit or regular office hours. No refills can be done during evenings or weekends or from anyone other than my regular provider. It is my part to know when my appointments are and when to show up on time. It is not the primary care provider's responsibility to work me in if I late cancel or no show to get medicine refilled. Now, what the problem I have with this is pain patients generally are sick, you know, chronic illness and all that. So, I mean, I, when I was in pain management, they put breach of contract because I was in the hospital when they called me to bring in for a random pill count. Uh, so I would imagine that's similar to this. So if someone is sick, and we've heard that patients wake up sick with COVID or whatever, they cancel and then the doctors uh, dismiss them from the practice. Okay, here we go. All right. I, I need to mentally prepare to read this one. And I need to mentally prepare you two to hear this one. I agree that my provider and my pharmacy can work with any city, state, or federal law enforcement agency, including the state's board of pharmacy, in the investigation of any possible misuse or sale of my pain medication. I agree my provider can provide a copy of this agreement to my pharmacy or any other medical provider that I am seeing. I agree to waive any privilege or right to privacy or confidentiality with respect to these agreements. So they're literally having the patient waive their HIPAA rights and they're literally having the patient say, if the doctor thinks, now they didn't just say diversion, they said miss use. What's the definition of misuse? I mean, do we know the definition of misuse? It usually means not taken exactly as prescribed. So if the doctor prescribes one every four hours and you take it in one hour, in three hours and 50 minutes, that's misuse. If you take it at five hours instead of four hours, that's also misuse. If you sleep through the night and don't take your prescribed medication, also misuse. So that doctor now has a right to call the law enforcement agency on this patient if that happens. Excellent. Okay. I will bring all medications to office visits for a pill count when asked. I will not change the dose of the medication myself. I agree not to use my medication faster than told to. And I know that if I don't follow these rules, it may result in me being without my medication forever. The grammar in this is not the best. That should be mine, not me. But you know what? Whatever. If a change is needed, I will first talk to my provider. I will only use a pharmacy listed to obtain my medication. Now, I understand why this next one is here. I do. But again, I want to know, is this this way for any other patients or is it just pain patients? I agree to be polite at all times with providers and staff, even when I feel my needs are not being met. This means no swearing, yelling, louder root tone, repeated calling, demanding, or other similar behavior. Let's say a patient is sick, cancel an appointment, need a refill. If they call repeatedly, I guess that's considered demanding behavior. Do they do this for anyone else? Again. I don't think so. This is the one also where I was, I, I really was shaking last night. Now I see a lot of really horrible stories, but this, mm, this shows how stigmatized pain patients are at this point and any treatments allowed, any kind of treatment. Ready? Okay. I am aware that even when I am upset and not getting my needs fully met, that I cannot change medical providers for at least, okay. Deep breaths here. Ready? You too. Take a deep breath. I am aware that even when I am upset and not getting my needs fully met, that I cannot change medical providers for at least one year after starting care with a primary care provider within this clinic system, unless I move 30 miles away. Any decision to change after one year will go to the Regional Opioid Oversight Committee which will make the decision if I can continue to get opioid medications and or be able to change care providers. If a provider dismisses you for not following this pain agreement, that medical provider will continue to see you for other medical issues. How nice of them. Okay. What? How can you? 
I mean, maybe they're just talking about within the same system, but now not only does a patient have to sign their HIPAA rights, right? The, the patient has to sign their HIPAA rights away. Now they have to agree they can't see another doctor unless someone tells them that it's okay. And it has to be 30 miles away that you move 30 miles away. Not, not any other reason. And why one year? Makes me wonder if this doctor knows what the red flags are in the algorithms that would get him flagged. And that's why they did this. Anyone is as enraged as I am here? Anyone? Anyone at all? Or is everyone just so incredibly used to this that you're like, yeah, more of the same? I understand that if I do not follow this agreement, my provider may stop prescribing these medications. If I continue to not follow my treatment plan, or if I break the law, my provider will stop this agreement and stop my medications immediately. A copy of this document has been given to me. The terms laid out by my provider within the agreement, if I have any questions, fully answered at this time to be reviewed. So tell me what you think here. Is this as bad as I think? Is it, was it as horrific as, as uh, I thought last night? Like, did I overreact? Do you guys feel that it's okay? Do any of you have pain agreements like this? If you do, please send them to me. Just uh, We're collecting them at this point. So just go ahead and send them to me because I don't understand how this isn't even a violation of civil rights. How can a doctor make you sign away your HIPAA, your HIPAA rights? How is that even possible? How? You have to agree. Now, let me tell you something. Here's the other thing I want to say. We are all desperate. I know how desperate you are. I know how desperate you are to get tiny bits of medication so you can have one good day a month or whatever it is. But if you get a contract like this, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I can't give you medical or legal advice and I never would even try to, but I would say for me, I wouldn't sign this contract. There's no way I would give a doctor my blessing to contact law enforcement if he thinks I misuse an opioid. No way. But again, I understand completely because we're all so desperate. So this, there's no judgment in that statement. Uh, I'm just actually shocked right now. And I want to hear from you. Are you shocked? Do you think this is as bad as I do? Am I just being uh, like reactionary here? Little overly sensitive because it's been a rough few weeks. What do you think? Let me know. I want to hear from you. And again, if you have a contract like this, please send it to us. If you enjoyed this content, I'm going to ask you to do a few things for us. Number one, if you would like our YouTube channel, the Doctor Patient Forum, and subscribe, that helps other people find us when they look for uh, chronic pain or any other issue that we've discussed. If you head on over to Spotify and give us a five-star review, the Dr. Patient Forum podcast, also the same thing. It helps people find us. And if you really enjoy this content and would like to support our cause, head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash a Dr. Patient Forum. And we have a lot more content like this. We have three tiers, the $5, $15, $30 tier. That $30 tier has uh, four coaching calls. These are monthly charges. We do offer 10% discount for annual members. And uh, it's considered tax deductible because it, we are a nonprofit. So consider heading over there. If you can't afford it, I completely understand. There's a free membership also. You can subscribe for free. And I do periodically free posts that you will get notified about. So at least head on over there and subscribe for free. And uh, I, I thank you for your support. We're very grateful for all of you that you listen to our content and those of you who have subscribed and have joined our Facebook pages at the Doctor Patient Forum. I'm sorry I had to bring this to you today. I, I, I just feel like I don't even know what to say and it's, it's very rare that I'm at a loss for words, but I feel like I'm at a loss for words today. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are hanging in there. Please don't stop fighting. I know I say this at the end of every video, but I feel like I need to keep saying this. Please don't stop fighting. We hear from so many who are suicidal and, and uh, have lost everything because of the lies of the, of the opioid elimination industry, um, just so that they could line their pockets. And it's disgusting and atrocious, and it's a violation of civil rights, and we will never stop fighting for you. So once again, you keep fighting. We'll do the same. And I hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.